Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Quran Weekly, this is your brother Umar Sulaiman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day, as in a hadith that's narrated by Sahar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in al-Bukhari, saw a man that was walking by that was of high status. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually asked the companions, he said, what do you say about this person? And they said, this is a person that if he speaks, people listen to him. And if he intercedes on anyone's behalf, his intercession will be accepted. And if he was to propose to anyone for marriage, his marriage would also be accepted. His proposal would also be accepted. And then the Prophet ﷺ saw another man walking by, but this was a person that was of low status and that was from the poor Muslims. And Rasulullah said, and what do you all say about this one? And they said, this is a person that if he speaks, no one's going to listen to him. And if he was to intercede on anyone's behalf, no one is going to accept his intercession. And if he was to propose to anyone for marriage, then his proposal will be rejected. And the Prophet ﷺ wanted to make a point. Rasulullah ﷺ said, but this person, is better than mil al ard, better than an entire you know earth full of this person. This person that you guys describe as being a reject, as being a loser, as being one of low status, is better than mil al ardi mithl hada. You know, an entire world full of that person. And so the Prophet ﷺ, what he was doing ﷺ, was he was redefining our idea of beauty. And the Prophet ﷺ did this on numerous occasions. So we see, for example, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he is Abdullah. He is the man who is the greatest of the Abadila, Abdullah. And this man radiallahu ta'ala anhu was so short that he was a dwarf. And the Prophet ﷺ one day, when Ibn Mas'ud was going up into the tree to grab him, a siwak from the Araq tree, the wind actually blew him into that tree. And the Sahaba laughed because his legs were exposed. So Rasulullah said, why are you laughing? They said, Ya Rasulullah, his legs are skinny. They're like two small twigs. And Rasulullah says, but you don't understand. You know, these two legs on the day of judgment will be the weight of Uhud, the size and weight of Uhud. Can you think about that? On the mizan, on the scale of good deeds, on the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that counts most, these two legs will be the size and the weight of Uhud. And so what the Prophet ﷺ was doing was he was again redefining value. Now you might have wondered from the title of this video, isn't it blasphemous to say ugly? Now first and foremost, because I know the takfir bombs are going to be in the comments. Ugly is in quotation marks for a reason. There are two companions of the Prophet ﷺ that are referred to with this word as damim, as being repulsive or ugly, but this is again just in physical appearance. And the first of those companions is Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Zahir radiallahu anhu as is narrated in Bayhaqi was a man with a very, very, you know, repulsive appearance, and he was also someone with a low self-esteem. Usually, when you read about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, you read about this person had Hassan al Waj, he had the best appearance, he was so handsome in the face. He, you know, in every way, you know, this person is being praised. But they did have the companions that were not like that. And so you had Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu who had a very low self-esteem and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recognized that and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for that reason always made it a point to recognize Zahir, always made it a point to put him on a pedestal. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Zahir badiyatuna wa nahnu hadiru, which means that Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he's our man in the desert because he was a Bedouin and we are his attendees in the city, meaning we all kind of work for him. Subhanallah, he is for us and we are for him. So Rasulullah was again making mention of him, letting him know that he was aware of him. And this was the, the beautiful adab of the Prophet And in fact, there's a beautiful story that Rasulullah he once saw Zahir anhu in the marketplace selling his, his, his stuff and Rasulullah grabbed him from the back and he started to wrestle with him. And he started to say, Man yashtari hadh al-abd, man yashtari hadh al-abd, who's going to buy this slave of mine? Who's going to buy this slave of mine? And Rasulullah is playing with him again to rec so that he can know that Rasulullah is aware of him. And Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he saw the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and remember Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu describes the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in this smooth texture, smoother than silk, subhanAllah. And he recognized the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then he didn't fight back too hard because he wanted to be close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says to the Prophet sallallahu something very, very hurtful, not to the Prophet sallallahu but rather he, he degrades himself. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, idhan tajiduni kasi, that no one's going to want to buy me anyway. Who would want to buy me even if I was a slave? Subhanallah. 
So even though they were laughing and they were joking, but Zahar radiallahu anhu again was brought down when he recognized that he was someone that was repulsive in appearance. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he turns Zahir around and he puts his hands on his shoulders and he says, وَلَكِنَّكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ رَبِيحِ He said, but you know what? In the sight of Allah, you are priceless. You are beautiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about if other people find you dameem and find you ugly and repulsive or deformed. You are beautiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the person that you are. And that's all that should matter at the end of the day is how Allah sees you. Now there is one man who was even more than that. And this man who was even more known for his repulsive appearance was actually named by that. And this was the Sahabi by the name of Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. You may have even never heard of Julaybib. In fact, many times you don't find him being mentioned in the books because again, Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you don't find much written about him, you don't find much about his appearance, you don't find much about his status. Julaybib, we don't even know Julaybib bin what? Okay, we just know Julaybib, and in fact, the name Julaybib means deformed. Okay, so he was known for his deformities, he was known for his appearance, and you know, subhanAllah, the way that he's described is qasir wa faqir wa damim. He was extremely short, he was extremely poor, and he was extremely repulsive. Again, the word damim, although we know that ugliness is not physically, but he was known for being physically unattractive, physically repulsive. And on top of that, what makes Julaybib radiallahu anhu's his case so you know uh, so heartbreaking was that Julaybib had no lineage. No one knew where he was from. He didn't know who his parents were. And in that type of society, where it's all about where you're from and it's all about your your tribe and all about your status, to be that physically repulsive and deformed and also not have any protection and no tribe to stand by you and no name at least, no reputation, SubhanAllah put him in a very tough situation. And Hamad ibn Salama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, just describing to us what Julaybib used to go through. He says before the ayat of hijab were revealed, so Julaybib is actually from Medina, said before the ayat of hijab were revealed, before Islam and even after Islam, before the ayat of hijab were revealed, Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala anhu was bullied so much that he used to only sit with the women and speak with the women because they were the only ones that would be sensitive towards him. SubhanAllah, think about that. He had such a rough time being amongst the men that he used to sit with the women because they wouldn't treat him as badly and they would be more sensitive towards him. That was his situation. So I mean, you can imagine this man and what he went through. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recognized again that this is a man that, you know, a young man that goes through a lot. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam constantly wanted to show him, show him and show the Sahaba, beauty is not in your outer beauty, it's in your internal beauty. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in fact, because Julaybib had no one to take up his cause, and as Hamad says, no one would have considered Julaybib for marriage, so he didn't even bother asking anyone for marriage. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he goes on behalf of Julaybib and he goes to a man and he says to this man from the Ansar who is a man of status, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to him, inni uridu an atazawwaj abnatak. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I want to get your daughter married. Now the man understood that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is coming to ask my, for my daughter's hand in marriage. And this daughter of his was a woman that a hasab wa jamal, a woman of status and beauty. So I mean, it's, it's expected that this woman of status and beauty is going to be proposed to by someone of great, of, of great you know, physical attraction and at the same time of great status. And who's greater than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in any of those regards? So he said, this is karam, this is, this, is, this, is, this is our honor, you know, subhanAllah, this is the pleasure of our eyes, the coldness of our eyes, that we would marry our daughter to the Prophet And Rasulullah said, la uridu hadi nafsi. He said, you know, I don't want her for myself. He said, but instead, I want her for, and of course the man was very disappointed. Because he thought, so who is it? Is it Abu Bakr? Is it Umar? Is it Uthman? Who, is it Ali? Who is it going to be? Rasulullah says, Inni uridu hali Julaybib. He said, I want her for Julaybib. And Julaybib was known for his, for his physical um, ugliness. So the man didn't want to tell that Rasulullah no. So he said to Rasulullah he said, I need to go and talk to her mom first. So he goes and he talks to his wife and he says, 
Rasulullah Sallallahu wants to marry your daughter. Now in the Arabic language, again, it could be, mean that he himself or for someone else. And she said the same words. She said that this is a great honor and this is the coolness of our eyes. This is wonderful news that Rasulullah Sallallahu wants to marry our daughter. And he says, he doesn't want her for himself. She said, well then for who? Is it Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali? Who is it? And by the way, the context of this narration is that they actually turned away quite a bit of people. So they, they wanted someone of, of great status. And he said to his wife, uh, Julaybib. And she said, Julaybib? 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 She started to scream. And then she even said something very inappropriate and, and refusing. She said, La amrullahi la nuzawwiju. She said, by the, by, the, by the years of Allah, she swore by the life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is haram, totally haram, that we will not marry him to our daughter. Now, this was her reaction. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed something very special in that household, in the heart of that daughter. So the daughter heard her mother screaming in the house, so the daughter came down and said, what's going on? And they said that Rasulullah wants to marry Julaybib to you, and we will never marry Julaybib to you. And she said, أَتَرَدُّونَ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم أَمْرًا Are you going to turn down a request and a, an order of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم? She said, marry me to him because he will not lose me. SubhanAllah, marry me to him because she knew who Jalaybib was too. But she was a righteous woman and that's why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was coming and asking for her, for Jalaybib. She said, marry me to him and he will not let me go to waste. So she understood that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wants what's best for her also and that Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala anhu would be the best for her. Her name by the way is unknown. But subhanAllah look at this great action that, the, that she did. Now Julaybib was so poor that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu volunteered to come forth and to pay his mahar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consistently wanted to again make Julaybib radiallahu anhu feel appreciated and show Julaybib that his beauty was true beauty that the ugliness that people saw in him was not true ugliness and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of one of the battles Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to ask he started to ask all of the different tribes and all of the different families he says هَلْ تَفْقِدُونَ ahad? are you missing anyone? are you missing anyone? are you missing anyone? And all of these families, all of these tribes are responding with the names of the dead from their families and from their tribes. And then the Prophet وسلم, he says, هَلْ تَفْقِدُونَ أَحَدٍ And then whenever they started to say, say that we, we're not missing anyone, Rasulullah وسلم, look at what he does. The same one وسلم, that took it upon himself to marry this man off. Rasulullah says, وَلَكِنِّي أَفْقِدُ جُلَيْبِيبِ He said, but I'm missing Julaybib. As if Julaybib is from my family, subhanAllah, I'm missing Julaybib. So the Prophet ﷺ starts to scan the dead, he starts to go around through the dead to try to find Julaybib in Uhud. And Rasulullah ﷺ, when he comes over the body of Julaybib, he sees around Julaybib seven of the enemies, seven of the opposing army. So meaning Julaybib actually killed seven before he was killed. And Rasulullah ﷺ, he stands over Julaybib and he becomes emotional. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Qatala sab'a, he killed seven, wa qatalu, and then they killed him. And Rasulullah ﷺ stands over Julaybib and listen to these words. You know, and tell me what physical appearance is worth this. When Rasulullah ﷺ stands over this man and says, Hadha minni wa ana minhu. Hadha minni wa ana minhu. Hadha minni wa ana minhu. This one is from me and I am from him. He is from me and I am from him. He is from me and I am from him. And the Prophet ﷺ picks up Julaybib with his own two hands and he was so small and the narration says that he had no other sarir, no other, uh, no other coffin, no other, nothing else to carry him except for the hands of the Prophet ﷺ because of how small he was. Rasulullah ﷺ picks up Julaybib and he takes him, he takes him a little bit further and the Prophet ﷺ puts down the body of Julaybib and he ﷺ himself digs the grave of Julaybib and Rasulullah ﷺ buries Julaybib alone. What more do you want than that dear brothers and sisters? What is, a great, what is greater beauty, what is greater value than to be seen that way by Allah and His Messenger ﷺ? And I remind you again, if you notice in the title, the word ugly is in quotation marks because although everyone else saw him as ugly and saw Zahir as ugly, they were not ugly by any measure. 
They were beautiful in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And this should teach all of us a lesson. Number one, those of us who are self-conscious and those of us who may be actually suffering from a physical deformity, don't try to find your beauty in the sight of other people. Find your beauty in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the only sight that will matter on the Day of Judgment. And for everyone else, when you recognize that there is someone with low self-esteem, make it a point to raise that person's self-esteem. That is a sadaqah to your brother. If smiling in the face of your brother is a sadaqah, then what about going to someone who has a low self-esteem and making them feel special and making them feel appreciated the way that the Prophet Sayyidul Khalq the, uh, and, and the most noble of creation uh, did for these companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us true beauty and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.